1960s, Nigeria was the agriculture powerhouse of the African continent. And then the discovery of oil and gas shifted a lot of the attention into various sectors of the economy. But agriculture still accounts for around two thirds of Nigeria's uh, GDP, so still a massive contributor. Joining us now is uh, the Agriculture uh, Minister and Rural Development Minister of Nigeria, Akinwumi Adesina. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. It's good to be with good, you. Good to be with you. Um, Amazing story with regards to agriculture in the African continent, a massive shift away from resources, but a resource of a different kind. Where does Nigeria stand on this right now? Well, first and foremost is that Nigeria was the global player um, in the agricultural market. Uh, we, we were the largest player in terms of palm oil production uh, in the world in the 1960s. We were 27% of global production, and we went down to 0% now, and we're importing crude palm oil from Malaysia, even though Malaysia got it from Nigeria. Uh, we were the largest uh, exporter of groundnuts in the world, 47% uh, of global export in the 60s, and today we're 0%. And if you take a look in terms of also cocoa production, uh, we were 18% of global production in 1964. Today we are 8%. Now we find oil, yes. When we find oil, we forgot about agriculture. And, and that's what we are changing today. We are changing it because Nigeria spends about $11 billion importing food. Basic things like wheat, fish, rice, and sugar. When Nigeria has amount of land that is actually incredible, we have 84 million hectares of land, of which only 40% is cultivated. Nigeria has a population of 167 million people that can buy and eat what we produce as a country. We have three of the eight largest rivers on the continent, and we have a, ch a labor force of about 110 million people. Therefore, we have cheap labor. So our goal as a government is to diversify our economy away from oil, to create jobs, to do import substitution and save ourselves all the billions of dollars that we are spending now importing food, keep those uh, uh, jobs at home, and buy and eat and process what we actually produce as a country. And this is part of the agriculture transformation agenda That's which we're right. actually here to discuss at the World Economic Forum. So tell us about what this agenda is and how quickly you can actually implement this on the ground. This ground. agenda is a very focused agenda to actually take all of that potential we have in agriculture and turn it into wealth for Nigeria. Uh, it's a very focused one. We've determined that we are going to add 20 million metric tons of food to our domestic food supply by 2015. We want to create 3.5 million jobs through this sector by 2015 because we have a high unemployment rate among our youth and agriculture has the greatest potential to do that. And it's already working. You know, we took bold reforms on the fertilizer sector. The fertilizer sector in Nigeria was the most corrupt sector for decades. For four decades, government bought and sold fertilizer. Only 11% of farmers got the fertilizer. Under this president, President Goodluck Ibele Jonathan, when I became minister, it was very clear we had to clean up this mess, and we did. It took us 90 days to clean up a corruption of four decades in this particular sector. We put in place investment-friendly policies to attract private sector. In the last one year alone, we have attracted eight billion U.S. dollars of private investment commitments into Nigeria's agriculture. Are you looking at foreign uh, commitments that are coming through? Foreign investor commitments, local investor. It's commitments? actually both. You know, we have over six billion dollars of foreign direct investment into agriculture in one year, and about 1.3 billion dollars from our own local companies into the sector. What that really tells you is that the era of taking agriculture as a development program, some kind of sector where you manage poverty. It's gone. I don't see agriculture as a development activity. I see agriculture as a business, whether you're in seed, whether you're in fertilizer, and logistics, and so on. And that's what you're seeing. What's also fascinating is in Africa, we know that the, the small farmers, yeah. those are the real important part of the, of the economy and the, in, within the agriculture space. What kind of support are you going to be offering the smaller farmers? The, well, the we ones that, yeah. Yeah, we're actually doing that today. I mean, if you look at how we ended the fertilizer corruption in Nigeria, mm -hmm. we used the most important tool in the hand of a farmer, which is mobile phones. We now we are the first country in Africa to develop what is called an electronic wallet, in which registered farmers get vouchers for seed and fertilizer on their mobile phones. And they walk to the seed companies and fertilizer companies and input retailers, and they pay cash for the balance, because we provide 50% balance, I mean subsidy, and the farmer pays 50%. And they get their seed and fertilizer. Last year alone, we reached 1.2 million smallholder farmers, all of them getting their seed and fertilizer by mobile phone, and that is empowerment.
targeting those that should be getting it, not the fat cats. With regards, I'm glad you mentioned seeds. Um, we also know genetically modified seeds are very popular on the African continent. Tell us about the companies that are providing seeds. Are they locally based? Are you looking at multinational companies? Well, you how know, much money is involved in this process? Well, you know, last year alone, let's just take fertilizer because of what we did. I mean, the, the local fertilizer companies uh, supplied um, they spent uh, $100 million supplying fertilizers directly to farmers instead of to government, which was the, what used to be in the past. In time of seed companies, $10 million worth of seed was supplied by seed companies directly to farmers last year. These are local companies. But I do want to say that Nigeria will not be laggard when it comes to technology. You know, we are running a modernization program for our agriculture sector. We know that hybrid seed is very important. We know that biotechnology is very important, and we are going to deploy the best of sciences in ways, of course, that's environmentally sound and ethical, but we will use modern technology to revolutionize Nigeria's agriculture. Minister, if I could also just uh, move away from the topic and talk about South Africa for a moment. The powerhouse of Africa. Do you have any contention with this, with the fact that South Africa is the powerhouse? Do you think Nigeria will become the powerhouse? You know, from your perspective, from a Nigerian perspective, where do we stand? Well, I think you should watch out because, you know, currently right now, you know, Nigeria is the fourth fastest growing uh, economy uh, in the world. And Nigeria already has surpassed South Africa in terms of foreign direct investment. Nigeria is the number one country in terms of foreign direct investment right now uh, on the continent. So I think we are a very, very friendly country with South Africa. But, you know, Bafana Bafana can play us in soccer. And I can proudly say, okay, we might lose. But I can tell you, in terms of economy, we beat you guys. All right. Fair enough. Let's also just um, take a look at the labor unrest that, I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's even making headlines in Nigeria, but making headlines around the world with what we see in South Africa. Do you think this is an endemic issue that we're seeing on the African continent because of the sort of inequality that we're seeing on the ground? Do you think it's, it's making Africa look bad when you see, you know, images of what happened in Mauritania, uh, in Rustenburg, with regards to the platinum mines in South Africa? Well, I think that if there's a, it's a reality that we face in Africa is that uh, it's social demographic is such that we have a rapidly growing youth population and we have to be able to create jobs very fast for them, quality jobs for them. You know, if you have the youth that are restless and they don't have good jobs, it's, it's actually, the devil doesn't like an idle hand. You know, it becomes actually very difficult. So I think African countries absolutely have to have a lot of employment policies that can get a lot of the youth into uh, the labor market. And that is why in Nigeria, we are starting a new program called Nigerian Agricultural Entrepreneurs because the farming population in Nigeria is largely aging. And so we want to replace that aging population with young, dynamic, commercial entrepreneurial farmers and we make Nigeria's agriculture more productive, efficient, and competitive. And so we are launching a program called Nagro Premiers. And this will be 760 young graduates that are all coming into commercial agriculture. They will make our agriculture competitive today, and they will make it even more competitive into the future.